Hi, you're listening to Connect and Collaborate. I'm Alex Karn, your on-air producer. I'm filling in for Alex Hopkins today, and I'm really excited to have in studio Anthony Lombados of Footers Catering for a regular program on what makes a great place to work. Uh, and this program, uh, I'm really excited for because we're going to talk about uh, a little international travel. That's right. That's awesome. right. It's going to be a good one today. Yeah. yeah thanks, Alex. We're uh, we're excited to be here. It's always a pleasure and uh, uh, and, and fun to come in and, and chat about a topic I'm definitely passionate about. So, yeah, uh, yeah footers, man. We're uh, we're chugging along. New Year is here, so we're excited to uh, to, to kick off 2019. We had a big uh, team meeting this morning and just launched into uh, kind of our our strategic plan of what we want to accomplish this year and our, our overall theme. Uh, you know, the first part of our mission statement is love what you do. And yeah. so for this year, um, we want to spend a lot of time focusing on that piece. And, and really everything we want to, everything we do this year, we want to look at through the lens of does this help our team really enjoy their job? And uh, one of the things we talked about today was this isn't just about fun and games and goofing off or making anybody's job easier. What we do is very stressful. But some of the most rewarding things in your life that, that you accomplish in the, uh, uh, also tend to be the most challenging. And sometimes that stress can be used in a very positive way. Um, and so if we come into these stressful situations but see it through this lens of we're excited to be doing this and this is something that we have the honor of being part of these special days, it's going to help us to execute at a very high level as opposed to the reverse. Um, so that's kind of what we're, our overarching theme is for the year. We're, we're excited to talk about that. Um, but more importantly, today we have two very special guests um, I was very fortunate to just get back from a culinary adventure in Tahiti with Sam Totten and Carrie Dismuke, who both work for Footers, and we went on this trip um, to celebrate their 10-year anniversary this year at Footers. So both of them have been at Footers for 10 years, wow. and, uh, and so today I thought it would be very fitting to not only recap our trip, but have them come in and talk about their experience at Footers, and they've done so much work on what it takes to create a great place to work. I think they're going to have some great insight. So Sam and Carrie, welcome. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Thanks for having you. us. <laughs> Thank you, guys. All right, so let's jump right in. This this idea of a, a, of a anniversary trip, Sam. You know, you were there when we came up with this idea that we should do something cool. Uh, talk a little bit about how we came up with this idea. Yeah, sure. So when we we started with very little culture, so we said, how do we build culture in our workplace? And the best way was to go and study some of the companies that we admire. So we went up to Fort Collins and visit New Belgium Brewery, and on the tour they talked about how the five-year anniversary trip for their employees was to go to Belgium and learn about beer. So we said, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Oh, I wish we were a big company like that. I wish we could do that. And that's when we started thinking about it going, wait, wait a minute. Like, let's, let's look at this. This is, this is doable. And so we talked about it and threw it around a little bit. And sure enough, you know, a couple years later, we had a, a couple coordinators coming up on their five-year trip and Anthony and April said, "Let's go. Let's go for it." They went to Alaska on a cruise. Uh huh. Sponsored and, by Food and Wine magazine. Yep. And that's how it came to be. So just studying others and see what they're doing, and then putting our own little twist on it. it adapting it. It was. Uh, yeah, it was cool to to do that and to see something that that our team responded to. They thought it was a really cool idea. And when we looked at, you know, somebody works for you for five years, um, we felt like that's a very big commitment and it needed to be honored and recognized in a special way that was beyond just a monetary gift or, um, you know, a, a watch, no offense to the companies that give out watches. <laughs> uh, but we wanted to create something that was really a, um, a, a memorable experience, something that, that, um, they could bring their significant other on and would be is something that hopefully they would, they would never forget and maybe not do, um, necessarily on their own, uh, w was another piece of that. Um, so, you, you know, Carrie, uh, you, you've now done a five-year and a 10-year trip. Both of you guys have. But talk a little bit about your experience when you found out, like, hey, I'm getting close to my five-year trip and, and what that was like. And, and talk a little bit about. Well, I would say before even jumping into that, I remember when you rolled out the first five-year trip and uh -huh. being in the room and having April and Anthony come out with a poster board 
and announcing it to one of our coordinators about how they're celebrating this five-year trip and it's a culinary learning experience and just how floored all of the employees were and I remember my jaw just dropping like I love to travel and to know that was an option I was like oh my gosh so then as we were coming close to the the like when you hit the four-year mark you're like oh man when is when are we going to start talking about this um, and I think we ended up going around four and a half years and it was unbelievable it it was so surreal it was such a great learning experience we went to the Caribbean Food and Wine Festival um, at Turks and Caicos and um, it was so great we learned so much about different types of wine and wine pairing uh, but also a lot of the local food we had a lot of conch uh, we had a lot of lobster um, and in addition to all of the food it was a great bonding experience between all of us we stayed in um, a condo together so we were around each other a lot and I think that made that trip so much more enjoyable that we were constantly bonding and whether it was playing cards on the deck or um, talking about the next day's um, learning experience or what we took away from that day and how we're going to incorporate it um, back into the menus it was every day was so exciting I'd say yeah and I'll add to circle back you can lose the watch that you get but you can't lose the amazing experiences and the bonding time which is just so so important because you come back with more uh, intimate relationship with your coworkers, and it makes the interactions when you have challenges at work and you might be frustrated with Carrie but it's like oh I just hung out with Carrie she's cool we had a great time I know that she's not trying to do something wrong or vice versa right. <laughs> Carrie um, it, it makes those relationships a lot smoother I think and so it benefits in, in that way as well. Absolutely. And I think because we go with the owners, that makes such a huge impact. It's not, here's a trip for you and your significant other. It's here's a learning experience that you are going to learn with the owners. And you're going on a trip of a lifetime that they haven't experienced um, either. And to be able to experience those first together is so special and creates such great lasting memories. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you feel that way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. It's special for us to, to be able to do that, too, and to experience that together. Um, and, and I think that's a really interesting um, twist that, that you talk about, that these are new experiences for us as well. Mm -hmm. um, so to be able to share in those with you, uh, you know, when we think back to Turks and Caicos, that was, a, 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 I mean, incredible um and funny story we actually you know they have a little chef's program there where um these you know high school students are learning how to become chefs and we got to talking with them and uh we we you know talked with the directors of this program and and set up an exchange for four of their students to come and spend a week with us here in colorado after awesome. that experience and it was it, it was really cool for us to bring four you know teenage boys from turks and caicos to colorado you know they had never seen mountains before we, we you know had never seen an amusement park before i mean just things that we take for granted and you know, so to be able to show them some of that but then also for them to learn what catering was um it, it was a, it was a cool chance that I think none of us expected, but we stumbled up on oppor stumbled upon an opportunity for us to give back to um, the, these people of the islands that that had been so hospitable to to us. It's a two way street. That's right. That's right. Well, I love that because it sounds like it's not just. Uh, I mean, I'm sure a lot of our listeners are familiar with kind of incentive vacation packages, and you after so many years you do well. They'll send you down to Mexico to get drunk. This is like, hey, <laughs> this is actually, I mean, it's not just that. It's, it's. I mean, obviously, you know, it's nice to go to nice places, mm -hmm. but it's team building, it's education and research. You're taking something back. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, we, we've, we've always tried to craft them. These are our trips for people that have been in management positions with us. Um, so, you know, when we think about that, we've got, you know, 24 people on our team that are in some sort of leadership capacity that if they're in those positions for five years, then they're going to get the same opportunity to go on a culinary adventure. Um, and it's a challenge sometimes for, for April and I, cause you know, you know, we have to put together what trips are, are, you know, people are excited about. That's another piece we want want um, this to be a, a fun thing um, and so we kind of will test the waters on what they're interested in some people really want to see a city and you know dive into the food scene somebody some people want tropical some people don't care about that um, you know the cruise we went on to Alaska was amazing it was sponsored by food and wine magazine and so to be able to get behind the scenes at the you know on this uh, cruise ship uh, on the culinary you know workings of how you feed that many people you know 
that many meals and basically have to have all of your provisions there for a week. Uh, that was fascinating, and that was a, a cool experience for us to, to take back. Yeah, unique logistics there. That's They're right. really good at planning them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they absolutely are. And I think one of the big things, we may take back a lot of information, but it's how we almost pay it forward to the rest of our team. We do big presentations to the rest of the management team. So they know that, you know, we weren't just sitting on a beach. We we took away a lot of valuable information and in how we may um, incorporate some of their service techniques or their menu items into our catering business. Yeah, that's a that's a great point, Carrie. So so fast forward, you know, we did the five year trip. That was five years ago. Ten year trip. We just just got back literally Four days ago, <laughs> still got the we're pants. still recovering. Yeah. We're all yeah. healing a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but but talk about how that experience differed from from five year. It was uh, like on steroids. I felt like it was <laughs> bigger and better and uh, like one of the good sequels to to the to original movie. Um, so talk a little bit about the trip for the listeners of, of what we got to do. Yeah. So. One of the excursions that was arranged for us was to go in the ocean and swim with sharks and stingrays. Like that's something I never in a million years thought I'd be doing. Uh, so it was like, well, here you go. That's teed up on a platter, and there you, you take advantage of it. And I thought I was going to be freaked out by it, and it was super calm. And here I'm petting stingrays and waving at sharks, and they're swimming right by you. And it was, I don't know, it was just mind blowing. <laughs> you, to be put in a situation that a you never thought you would you'd be doing but be to, in, in such a beautiful place too it was like kind of culture shock to a little small degree to be in such an untouched portion of the world and then even the flight you're thinking about okay uh we're on the speck in the middle of the ocean you know south of the equator and it doesn't even show up on the maps until <laughs> you zoom in really 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 far and yeah it's it's like just raw untouched earth and that was pretty cool with the exception of you know one of the big bigger cities that actually has people and <laughs> businesses and whatnot but yeah yeah it was it was amazing and beautiful and yeah beyond my wildest dreams carrie talk a little bit about you know french polynesia tahiti bora bora like you know how, how did you know why did that stand out as this is where we want to go especially because you were telling the story about that wasn't necessarily like any place that was on a bucket list for you right um yeah when we were, we had narrowed down a couple of our like top decisions from there, April and Anthony narrowed it down from there. And we had to say what destination we were most excited about. And it was really hard to choose between Tahiti and the other one was Croatia. Croatia. And it came back to Croatia, you can always go to, but Bora Bora, that is like a once in a lifetime experience that you will never have that opportunity to go to. Most people that go there are going on their honeymoon or, you know, the random older people that are taking their entire family <laughs> on a cruise. We ran into we one ran of those. Into. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that destination was unbelievable. I was expecting a lot more relaxation and learning more from the locals. And it was a lot of it was a lot of adventure as well. And I think that's the great part about cruises is that you have your home base, but you're able to go explore the islands. And it was really great exploring each island and to see how different each one was. You know, you go from ones that look like Jurassic Park where there's <laughs> mountains surrounding you. And then there's other ones like Bora Bora where you're surrounded by these little huts all over the island. Um, it was definitely a place I'd recommend everyone to go to for sure <laughs> well and and the, the finding that opportunity was really cool you know sam and i were just looking at options and what what could we do and we were we were looking up i think we googled best culinary cruises and we stumbled upon paul gogan um, has this small cruise so you know typical cruise ships have thousands of people and this was highly focused on the food and service so there were 300 guests max on the ship and it, 200 staff so it, wow. it, it yeah. was incredible. I mean, the service there, you know, from my experience was something that was, was really impressive um, and, and gave us, I think, a lot of things that we can take back. Absolutely. It was the kind of service where the first day I remember walking down the hallway 
and somebody announced me by my name and I had never even introduced myself to them. The fact that they took time to memorize everyone's photos when you check in was so impressive to me. And when we sit down for dinner and they know us by name and they know our drink of choice and what we're going to order. And near the end of the cruise, we were joking because every night we'd order all of these different courses so we could try all of the, the local fish and all of the entrees and see um you know everyone everyone try it and near the end um one of our waiters knew that we always wanted every entree and that we'd always order one or two <laughs> for the center of the table that the last two days he just put it on himself and would show up with an extra entree in the center of the table so we could all try it and it the, the service was unbelievable like the kind of service where the second you take a drink of your wine they're refilling it yeah, like, you turn around to talk to somebody and you look back and it's already full yeah, up again. but they became like our family over the um, course of yes. that week and we we even had this, some really great photos with them at the end and and then it's hard to say goodbye and that last day oh, it goes uh, good luck i hope your next crowd's as fun as we are or maybe they're way better i don't know right. but uh yeah so we had nanito manolito and willie that was yeah. our crew for dinner and they they took they were great phenomenal. care of us yeah. yeah and the food was something you, you know i mean cruise on uh, food on cruises can be hit or miss um I, I mean we had some really amazing food and um uh, getting a chance to chat with the chef and see he brought out uh you, well you tell the story so, yeah on one of the first days on the deck of the ship he brought out this giant moonfish which 75 it, pounds 75 pounds which you know it it looks like a giant disc, I guess. It's kind of flat, but then big and round, like the moon. Hmm. And and he carved it up in a demo and showed us how you get the fillets and the history of the fish. And the record was 600 pounds off the coast of Hawaii 30 years ago. And it's just amazing in the way that they can get all the meat off the bones and how many fillets that you get out of that. And then that's what was served to us that night. And that was probably the best fish I've ever had in my life, this moon fish. I think it's also... Uh, ono in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, we, yeah, I, I mean, it was, I'm glad you guys had so much fun. I had a lot of fun too. Um, and, and it's a special thing, hip footers, that we've embraced and it's, it's become really part of our tradition where people, like Carrie said, look forward to it. And uh, I, I remember the first five year trip and it was the, um, husband of, of one of the, the uh, of Lindsay who was on the trip and he goes well this is an every five year thing right <laughs> 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 and I remember for April and I thinking like what like 10 years like that's so far out of our like we weren't even thinking that far we had just owned the business for a couple years like this is all like so fast and it was like well yeah if you guys stay for 10 years we'll do another trip <laughs> and so um, yeah this was our, our third um uh, 10 year trip that we've done. So it was uh, very exciting. We've got another five year trip coming up with two of our managers uh, a little later uh, this year, um, which, which should be fun. And we'll, we will highlight that a little bit later, but we're working on our 15 year trip. Yeah. So in five years, we'll do another show and awesome. go to the South Pole or the moon or something. Yeah, I was going to say, we'll Mars. Next. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we've, we've got a few years to figure that out. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any other places that are high on the list for you? Is that a culture uh, club Norway question? for me, just because my, <laughs> my heritage. Yeah. So Scandinavia, I think that would be really cool. And Chef's Table on Netflix, like the cool stuff. That's good inspiration yeah. for where to go. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so I want to shift the conversation a little bit. This is one of the perks, one of the things that we do um, that we felt a, is a good way to, to make our employees feel um, feel feel valued and to, to also thank them for, for what they've put in to um, – work when when you think about dedicating that much time five years ten years of your life to to one company um that's pretty significant so let's talk a little bit you know let's take a step back from footers and and from you guys you guys have worked at a couple other companies before what it, what do you think it takes to create a great place to work uh, i think it starts with the people i feel like i come in to work with my friends every day and that makes everything else just multitude easier um uh, when it's fun and so I think that's been kind of the basis is, hey, we got to have fun. Yeah, it's not always fun, but you can have fun even while you're working hard. So we'll have competitions, even if it's something as trivial as lining a trash can, it's who can line them the fastest, like <laughs> that kind of stuff. And that attitude and taking that to everything that we do, whether it's lining trash cans or coming up with standard operating procedures and how can you have fun with like the language you use in the standard operating. First do this and it's very rigid and you can have, 
you can have a soul there too. So the way we write that stuff, I think it comes out in in those in all sorts of different ways. So, Carrie, what are your thoughts when when you think about creating a great place to work? I would say knowing and understanding that every employee is different, and that some of them. Um, may value balance a little bit more than they may value free lunch or, you know, whatever it is. I think a lot of larger corporations don't really know each of their employees. And I think the fact that Anthony and April are on every single interview, you know, it's like a seven interview process leading up to the management positions. I think they are truly taking time to get to know each and every employee that they're going to hire and make sure that they are a good cultural fit and that they will fit in with the rest of the team and that we'll all have fun with them and it's not just a fit for the position. Um, I think that's huge when hiring. Yeah, that's a, a big part. Sam, talk a little bit about that um, from your perspective and in, in our hiring process. Oh, yeah. it's you have We do group hiring as well. So in addition to hiring for culture rather than position, uh, we have the rest of the team in there getting to ask questions that maybe pertain to their department, which is outside of the position that we're interviewing for and off the wall questions and to really get a feel for this person. And when we all agree, that's when we make the hire. If somebody doesn't, then we you typically move on. So what we're all in agreement, that's buy-in from everybody. And so then there's no finger pointing of, oh, I told you we shouldn't hire that person. And we're, I don't know, when you're all on the same page, it's just, and, and everybody's invested in not only the hiring of that person, but that person's success. I, I mean, that's what I've seen um, as kind of a, a byproduct. It wasn't something intentional that, that we thought about, but we've seen that happen over time that as people have put their stamp and said, yes, I think this person is going to be a great addition to our team, all of a sudden when they come in, it's like, let me help you be successful. Let me help you um, catch up or, or learn these things. Um, and, and I think that that's been a really cool thing that's, that's happened and a big credit to you two. I mean, you've been a big part of, of making that happen. And I think from the interview standpoint, coming in, it may be very intimidating. You see 10 people around a table, all of them <laughs> asking all of these questions. But at the same time, if you spin it the other way, it's they're a family and they want to make sure that you're going to be a perfect fit for the family. And for them to know that is so special. And to get to know each and every one of those members during the interview is, is really huge. And you get to figure out their personalities. And we always add in jokes and what do you do for fun? And I remember one of our old co-workers uh, used to say, how quickly can you chug a beer? And <laughs> it would just be like, ask them a question they don't expect to try and like catch them off guard and see how they respond. Are they going to get really corporate on you or are they going to laugh and say, two seconds, like, let me go get one. Um, I yeah, think, get them off their predefined uh, answer for yeah, interviews. Yeah. It, a, yeah. That's a whole nother. We need problem. to bring, yeah. that, bring that question back. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't had that. So, uh, you know, on the flip side, what, you know, we, and part of this is we've worked with a lot of companies that have looked to us. You know, what do you see companies struggle with when it comes to creating a great place to work? Um, I think every company has a culture and it, and it comes from within. And when you try to take this pie in the sky culture, and fit these square pegs into round holes. So it has to be kind of organic, I guess. And you have to really know and understand your employees and understand what your culture is and then improve your culture. Right. So uh, in a uh, nutshell. It's great insight. Uh, Carrie, anything you want to add to that? Um, I would say a lot of larger corporations are forcing fun on you. And if they truly get to know each of their employees and what's fun for them, it's not going to be forced and that everyone's going to be having a great time. Cool. Well, we're going to continue and pick this back up as uh, as we uh, go into segment two. Yeah, super exciting talking uh, with Anthony Lobatos of Footer Skatering about uh, what it takes to make a really great place to work and his guests, uh, Sam Totten and Kerry uh, Dismuke. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with more from COBRT's Connect and Collaborate. Thank you. Collaborate. I'm Alex Carr, I'm the on-air producer. I'm filling in for Alex Hopkins. And uh, again, really excited to have uh, one of our favorite guests, Anthony Lobatos, Footers Catering. And we're talking about 
what it takes to make a really great place to work. And it sounds like these guys know what's up. So I'm going to let Anthony take it away. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. Alex in for Alex. You make it easy. You make it easy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, thank you. We certainly appreciate that. We uh, we feel like we have such an incredible team at, at Footers. And um, we also feel like we have a lot to learn. I, I think that's one of the things that makes our team so special. It's, you know, yeah, we think we're doing a lot of things well, but we also are continuing to learn and figure out how we um, uh, continue to make it better every day. And uh, and so it's been an exciting journey. So it's an honor to have Sam and Carrie on today, two of our team members who have been with Footers. They're celebrating their 10-year anniversary this year. Um, and we had talked in the first segment about our anniversary trip that we did and the most recent one. We just got back with them from uh, Tahiti for their 10-year anniversary. So let's jump back in, though, to creating a great place to work. And, and we kind of laid some framework on, on what that looks like. But let's dive a little bit in on, on Footers and why um, why you guys feel like Footers is a special place. Well, for me, a little <laughs> unique perspective. It was my first job uh, in high school. And it was a summer and winter job throughout high school and college. And I went and studied architecture in 2008. Got my master's at a perfect time when <laughs> things were going the other direction. Um, and approached Anthony and said, hey, I'm really struggling. Do uh, you got anything for me? And this is part of what makes Footers great is that relationship was still there because of what we had done and the fun that we had had over the years. That was at the forefront of my mind. I could have gone and done a whole number of other things, but I came back to Footers and was excited about it and going, okay, this that was fun in the past. Now what kind of fun can we make for the future? And there was a lot of opportunity there at, at that time when I came back um, to, to see, like, yeah, things were working and going, but I was like, it could be awesome. And I think uh, several of us recognized that, and that was kind of the impetus for sticking it out and then staying on even longer. And that was, you know, 10 years ago now. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, what has kept you at Footers for 10 years? I mean, oh, you, the Tahiti you, trip. <laughs> <laughs> Counting down. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think for me, there's a, a good level of autonomy that's provided to us. So we get to be the, um, create our own destinies to a certain degree of what do we want to do? What are we passionate about? What are interested there? And the support system from April and Anthony and the rest of our coworkers is all there for it. It's not just slapping the words on the wall and saying, oh, yeah, we're all about this. No, it, it, it truly is. That's how We live it and breathe it. And that's a very comfortable place to be, to know that you have the support to grow and learn. And it's not just lip service. Carrie, what are your thoughts on why Footers is a great place to work and what's kept you here for, for 10 years? Um, I would say a lot of companies have a culture club. Um, but we really take it a step further and have a culture club where there's a member from each department of the company involved. And I feel like that is so huge because they are each able to speak for their own department and their team members and what their team will really appreciate and enjoy when it comes to cultural activities. Um, when I came on board, we used to have Sunday fun days outside of work. And we're like, how can we incorporate this into work? How can we be doing these fun activities and relay races, but do it at work? And, <laughs> you know, culture club involved. And we create these awesome fun events throughout the year. Um, and it's a great opportunity for us to not just hang out with the management team, but all of our front of house team members, the team members that aren't in the office all the time and really get to know all of them. And it's so fun to be able to, um, be on teams and be a leader with a bunch of those and get to know them on a more personal level outside of the office is huge. Um, I would say the reason I've stayed at Footers, not necessarily the, the culture. <laughs> I'm part of the culture club. I love the culture. The culture is great. Um, but for me, it's definitely been the opportunity for growth. I um, have had, I've worn quite a few hats at <laughs> Footers, <laughs> um, which I think has definitely helped me um, understand the company a little bit more on a deeper level. Um, I remember back to my interview when um, a lot of 
different companies say when, when you're in college, oh, you need your degree. So then you get your degree and they're like, oh, well, you need experience. Well, I have this degree, but I need somebody to give me experience. And I remember Anthony saying, I don't care that you have experience. I care that you can do the job. And that has stuck with me for 10 years. And any time that I wore a different hat, I'm like, he doesn't care that I know that I've done it before. He cares that I can do it. And um, the opportunity to be able to wear multiple hats and constantly move positions um, has been huge for me. And a lot of people are just hired for their one position. And if they're burnt out or they're tired of it, that's it. And they, they move away. But at Footers, I've been given the opportunity based on my personality and my strengths. And um, Footers has seen where I can move up in that. Yeah, I give you a lot of credit too, Carrie, for, for being transparent about so many of those conversations. Like we've had very honest conversations over the course of time of you being like, I'm not happy. I don't like what I'm doing. And diving into that and saying, okay, well, what are you not happy about? What do you not like? What does it fit? Where, what, is, what doesn't fit? What fits? Um, a, and piecing all of that information together to, to put you in a, uh, a position to be successful. But that wouldn't have happened had you not felt comfortable coming and saying, hey, I think there's opportunity here for, for this to look different. Right. And I think it's funny when I tell a lot of my friends about the, the conversations I'll have with Anthony and how I would very clearly tell him I wasn't happy and I needed change. And a lot of my friends are like, you never tell that to your boss. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? And I'm like, no, Footers is different. Like they understand me and what I need. And I feel comfortable telling them that they aren't just going to fire me on the spot. Cause I said, I'm not happy. <laughs> like we're going to talk through it and figure out, well, what's not making you happy and how can we change that? When do you think that changed for you, Carrie? Of being vocal? Yeah, of just feeling that way. Because I think that, that, you know, people come into an organization and, and especially from the outside, if you're not used to it or you're not familiar with it or you're getting these outside influences from other people, you, you can't just jump in and be like, okay, I'm in. You know, at what point in your time of footers did you realize, like, it really was different? Um, I would say early on because – I got to know April and Anthony and Sam and all of my coworkers on that personal level outside of footers where there, there was that fine line of, is this a um, social conversation or is this a work conversation? And then they just blended. Like we were talking about work when we were outside of work. We were talking about fun when we were at work. And um, I think because I learned early on that I could have those conversations with them, it really helped give me the confidence to open up and to not just bottle everything um, inside. I, that has helped so much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, well, and, and, and I'd love to, to love hearing that. And, and obviously, uh, you know, we have a very special relationship there. Uh, you know, this is one of, I talk about this being one of the biggest honors of, of my life. Carrie and her husband, Jonathan asked me to officiate their wedding. And so to, to have one of your team members feel that comfortable that, that I should be the person that should preside over that ceremony was, was one of the most flattering things that, that has ever happened to me. Um, but it just, you know, I think it all kind of comes full circle into what we believe at Footers in terms of looking at the whole person. And it's, you know, not work carry and, you know, outside of work carry, personal carry, those two things all come together. Um, a, and we look at it as one person. And how can we help you in both areas? Because if things aren't good personally, it's going to affect your professional life. And if things aren't good professionally, it's going to impact your personal life. So well, let's just throw this out the door that we have to have this can be completely separate. And, and let's try to, to have this blend. Um, yeah. I, I, that term's being thrown around a lot instead of work-life balance. It's, you know, work-life blending. And, and I think that it is a good, um, a good way to, to kind of phrase what, what, I think we see going on in the work world and that we've been doing for, for years. <laughs> uh, but so part of what makes a great place to work is, is for your, your employees to really be comfortable enough to have those open conversations so that they're not stuck in a position they Absolutely. don't want to be in. Yeah. I, I'd add to that, especially in this day and age, gone are the days of working the same job for five, 10, 15, 20 years like our parents probably did. Um, so you have to evolve and change with those employees, and that's something that I think we have done a great job of creating new opportunities, knowing that, hey, they're probably not going to want to be doing the same thing, or, or as an employer, you might not want them to be doing the same thing after five years because they're growing. Hopefully, you're, you're coaching them and teaching them up to, to learn a new skill or become a, a 
supervisor and then a manager and then a director and those those types of things so i think yeah it's important to, for companies to evolve with and, and change with their employees because if you're just constantly filling up putting a, a new number to fill this slot i don't think that's sustainable well and especially for us because you guys have grown you know individually but you've seen the company grow and, and so both of you are in positions that didn't exist when you were hired, and and I think that that's an amazing thing when we look back. It's not like, you know, you got hired and you've worked your way up to this spot that you're in. You know, those weren't positions that we had, and we've grown as a company, and you guys have found that these are the spots that you fit best, um, and I think that's really cool. So I, I am curious to hear from you guys, you know, 10 years of footers. You look back, what are you most proud of accomplishing? Oh, man. <laughs> I think for me it would be uh, looking back to see that we started with this little core group of four or five people and now where we've grown and the opportunities that we've created for so many people to be part of the footers family, you know, it, it, and to scale that. It's very, very difficult to scale a, a good company culture when you start growing. And I think we've done done it to the best of our abilities. And I'm hope everybody else agrees uh but yeah to create the opportunities for so many more people than when we first started i think that's that is very rewarding to me and i think just the nature of what we do we get to put smiles on people's faces and that that's super cool too like how many i think about how many weddings that i've been to <laughs> that, that work right. family members you know or or places that i've been really cool locations that we've been at so yeah gosh i don't know i'm I'm going through the Rolodex now of, <laughs> of moments and things, and come back to me maybe. <laughs> Terry, what do you think when you when you think about ten years and what you're most proud of accomplishing? Um, well, I would say I was hired as a coordinator, and I realized the first year I didn't have much sales experience, and I really needed to learn a lot. And to be in that role, it's kind of hard to learn from the other coordinators because you're focusing on your own sales. So I took a step back and did more internal events. And that year, I really took a lot of time um, educating myself on how the other coordinators do sales and what works, what doesn't work, and how can I add my own spin to it. And then to go back a year later and move back into that sales position, um, it was awesome for me to see that my sales had more than doubled um, instantly. And it was quick. And it came so easily and I think a lot of that had to do with not only learning from the coordinators but developing a confidence in my response and what catering was and what weddings meant and um, I came in at such a young age and I didn't have that confidence I didn't have the experience that I really had to develop that um, I'd also say that since I've had the opportunity to move around into different positions it's given me more knowledge on how the company runs that that's helped me do a better job at my current position because I understand where other um, co-workers are in theirs so so thinking back to that you know 10 years ago when we talked about the interview and yeah. me saying that what are, what are some of the other initial thoughts that you had when you joined the footers team oh. I remember it seemed like a very close knit group, like very close knit. Like you, you show up to lunch and everyone has these inside jokes and you're like, whoa, what's going on? Like I missed out on all of this stuff. Um, but they just welcomed me in instantly. And um, it felt like I was their baby sister. Like it was so great to be able to um, come on board and learn from each of them, but to kind of do my own thing and develop my own personality, I think was it was really huge. Um, 10 years has been crazy. I know when we were in Tahiti, you're like, we have spent 10 years together. Like that is insane. That is a third of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I have spent with funners. Like think about how much you're developing personally and professionally. Like that is a huge amount of time and such a critical time when you're fresh out of college and you know, you're figuring stuff out. You probably still live at home. Like just a lot of <laughs> change like it's been insane like a huge amount of change the but great change and the other third is spent sleeping so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's most of your life right there yeah, yeah. yeah that's it. That's so, so sam back to to you in that same question you, you got a chance to see footers and, and in the, the historical age of my dad and uh prehistoric <laughs> <laughs> uh but 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 coming back after college, you know, what were your initial thoughts joining joining the the, the team again? Uh, 
it was a couple there's a couple levels of that some was when we did the contract for Prada homes and we're running concession stand we had a lot of fun i think some of the foundations for a fun place to work and great company culture kind of started there and some of that that was still there so i kind of came back i was like all oh, right it's right where i left it cool uh but then the other part was i think seeing the opportunity and knowing that there's work to be done and we are primed and ready to do it and excited to go go and tackle it so that was the opportunity i guess would would sum that up for me of what this could be it, it was really cool because we you know for me and you know i always said i grew up saying i'd never work in the catering business um and and i had a lot of that same thoughts when i came and joined back in that you know this is something that has so much potential and we can make this so much better. And we'd started to put a few pieces in place. You know, Colbert was there and Lindsay was there. Um, and, and, you know, we, we had a, a couple things that we were you know, just starting to get some momentum. And then Carrie joined and Sam joined. And it felt like we were really starting to get the right pieces to, to be able to get enough momentum to get everybody who was hesitant about this new direction we wanted to go in uh, over the hump. So I, I couldn't agree more that that was kind of a, a very crucial point for us to, to, to be able to overcome and, and get through that. And we were part of Footers as we went through the transition when you and April purchased it <laughs> and coming up with a mission statement and coming up with core values and changing our logo and moving buildings. And as an employee, that was so awesome to be involved in that. Like they would come to our meetings with color swatches. What color do you think the logo should be? What color do you think we should paint the building? And it was so, it really added in value to each of us to be able to be part of where Footers was going. And it was so special. Um, I, I absolutely loved all of that. That was so, so cool. And I feel like I have more of a buy-in because I was part of that. Yeah, that's... A, 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 I'm glad you highlighted that because that's something that I think sometimes we take for granted. We are so collaborative and we ask our team, you know, questions about a lot of different things and involve them in that process. Um, and so it's great to hear from, from you of how, how, how valuable that was and how much you appreciated that. Yeah, it's consistent with that group interview process. And like you said, I definitely, it sounds like it gives every employee a, a stake in, in the decision. Yeah. yeah. So, so looking back, knowing what you know now, what would you tell yourself? 10 years ago, starting at Footers. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, the road you think you're on isn't the road you're, <laughs> that you're really on. Uh, oh, but it's man. cool. And enjoy the ride and the adventure because it's going to take you to places like Tahiti, maybe even sometime too. <laughs> or a waterfall. Or a waterfall. <laughs> or um, a learning opportunity or a position that's different than you initially thought. It's going to take you in a lot of places that you didn't expect, but it's going to enrich your life in in ways that you didn't you didn't imagine yeah. when you started. I would say for me, since I started in a sales position, looking back 10 years ago, I would say be confident in your decisions. I find myself, depending on who I'm talking to, second guessing my response. And if I'm just so much more confident, it's easier to move on and um, be firm with my decision. I think early on in the sales position, since I didn't have that, the clients didn't have that. And then they didn't have the confidence in me or in footers. And um, had I just been confident and knowing where the company was going and knowing more about catering and weddings and corporate events and social events, um, I feel like that would have come a lot easier for me. Yeah, that's, a, that's I'm always fascinated when we think back to like, okay, <laughs> what would we tell ourselves? Yeah. Um, it, Sam, you brought up a really good point, and I want to hit on this because I think it's an important lesson um, that, that, you know, over dinner one night we, we recapped that, and I used the waterfall example. Um, but we talked about the importance of leaving space for unplanned activities, and I think this applies to business as well. That, that too many times we get focused on planning every single thing, and it all has to be mapped out, and this is the path we're going to take. And, and we don't leave ourselves space to to do something unique or to come up on experience that might present itself in front of us and um, so this was a day we had nothing planned and everything kind of came together where we ended up it was like we saw the right people at the right time and rented a car and just were to check out the island and then you know okay it's kind of in this direction oh there's a waterfall like we should drive toward it and then you know never would have found this waterfall if we didn't 
meet up with this person that said that was leaving and said, oh, just hike 30 minutes that way. And it came up on one of the most beautiful sites we'd ever seen in our life. But, but it was a tribute to the fact that we didn't plan anything specifically for that day, and we just let the day kind of come to us. And I think in business that can apply as well. Um, and, and something I'm proud of at Footers that we have pivoted a lot of times. We've been in a space and left ourselves space to say, yeah, let's go that way, or let's go this way, or somebody needs a new position. Does a company need that position? Yeah, let's move in that direction. Um, so thank you for highlighting that yeah. and bringing that up. Let's talk about 2019. We're, we're getting ready to kick off this year. What are you guys most excited about for, for 2019? We'll start with Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready for Sam on that one. <laughs> um, I would say, so last year, 2018, um, the company as a whole came out with um, new positions and directors and directors now manage people underneath them. And um, I would say last year was kind of, you know, the trial run. We're figuring it out. We're figuring out how many people are managed under each one. Um, and it worked really, really well. It worked great having one direct report. Um, and then they would then go to um, April and Anthony. And I'm really excited for this year. Um, since we figured out the first year, um, this year we're able to already go in and know what we accomplished last year, what we didn't, how we're able to tackle the year ahead. Um, and my direct report She's known me for 10 years now, so she knows me personally and professionally. And I think that's so huge because um, she's able to push me in the right ways um, to make me um, continue to push myself and to continue to hit those goals and add in things that I may not necessarily have thought of that I should be looking after. Like it's really good to have those direct reports and managers and owners that um, are really tweaking the way you, you think about things and really helping you grow and develop and not just stay in this one position and just push paper and whatnot. And she knows you so well. So well. That she, she knows that when I, to push yeah. and when to pull back. Right. And, and it has been really cool because this was one of those, you know, Carrie used to report to me and over the shift she reports to Colbert now. Um, but I see so many things that Colbert has brought out in her that um, that, that have led Carrie to, to grow and really flourish in her new position. And so I think that's really cool. Yeah. Sam, how about you? 2019. I'm most excited about a project we're working on called Mibe Tribe. Um, last year, we took the second part of our mission statement, which is make it better every day. And we turned it into a word, MIBE. And then somebody off the cuff, probably in Culture Club, was like, oh, the MIBE tribe. And we're like, <laughs> yes, MIBE tribe. <laughs> so now we consider ourselves the MIBE tribe. And we really want to take what we've done in our years of experience, uh, creating what we have now with that culture and a great place to work, and share that with other people in the industry. So we're working on putting together material to to help others uh, that are in spots where we were probably 10, 15 years ago. So that is exciting and uh, ready to help. I, I agree. It's, it's our, you know, we have this mission that we want to revolutionize the hospitality industry through culture and heartfelt leadership. And, and so it's something that we're going to be spending a lot of time focusing on how we do that, how we bring other people into the fold and share that knowledge with them. Um, I agree. I think it's a really exciting thing for us to, to be able to share that with other people. Um, and obviously, it's something that we're passionate about and we get excited about. And it's, I feel very fortunate that we've been intentional. I, I mean, and it's help from you guys, help from everybody within the team that we've all said, this is important and we're going to build this the way we want it to be built. And we're not going to let culture just take off on, a, on its own. We're going to make this something that, that is important to footers, and we're going to set the tone for what that's going to um, look like. So for us, I'm excited. Thank you both for being here. This has been an awesome conversation. Thanks. Congratulations again on 10 years. 10 years. And Alex. Thank you for having us. Yeah, hey, thank you. Us. Absolutely. Well, we appreciate uh, all your wisdom and, and hard work as far as making uh, making a great place to work. And uh, uh, Sam Totten and Carrie Dismuke, thank you so much for coming in and talking about your experience at Footers. Um, and thank you, Anthony, of course. Yeah, we always appreciate it. Come back uh, next time. Listen to COBRT's Connect and Collaborate. We'll tell you more about how to make a great place to work. Thank you so much. <laughs>